I've got my special guest here with me. And uh, so far from the look of things, I'm going to have one of the best Thursdays. And uh, if you are wondering how to plug in with your questions, the hashtag is Spice Drive at SpiceFMKE on every single platform. Are you here? Check in. I've also got the trend mill topic going on. So uh, come through. I'm hanging out with Cynthia Mumbo, the founder and CEO of Sports Connect Africa. And that's just one of the many things about her. She's fabulous. She's beautiful. And um, she's here with us live on the Spice Drive. <laughs> Cynthia, welcome to the show. Thank you. You've got a beautiful voice. I and look at, on radio. Looking, on your, look, looking at your profile, I'm like, well, this should also be on your profile. Hmm. Let's see. Um, I should have tried it, yeah. but sport really stole my heart. So It's your thing. Yeah, that's my thing. Wow. Welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time. I know Nairobi traffic can be a mess. <laughs> yeah, Nairobi traffic is crazy and yes. um, well, it doesn't really matter. I think um, the viewers and the listeners are my people. They should know I'm kind of jumping up and down now. No, I love <laughs> it. And yes, you can get to watch spicefm.co.ke. We are live. We're streaming around the world. Share that link, by the way. So, Cynthia, you're the founder, the CEO of Sports Connect Africa. Right. But who is Cynthia Mumbo? Ah, that's a very wide question. Right. <laughs> Cynthia Mumbo is um, a woman, a strong woman, yeah. a mother, um, a mother of a 13-year-old, my son's Wow. 13. Right. Yeah, I know, right? You don't look like a mother of a teenager. Well, I'm a cool mom. It's the sports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, he's keeping me young, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Um, I am a businesswoman. I'm, I'm a former athlete. Yeah. Um, and I, I hope to be a mentor. I, I believe I am a mentor to, to women so, um, and young girls. And, yeah. and, and I'm, I'm a passionate human being. I'm very passionate. I don't know how to do things halfway. That's <laughs> yeah. It's 100% everything. Go in, go hard or nothing at all. Yeah. I love it. And, you know, I'm looking at um, your profile and a lot of the things that you have done. You have been celebrated in different areas of your life what was it like as a child and why sports um you know a renowned celebrated athlete and now we're going to be talking about what uh, is in store for you this year but before that the background growing up how was it it was cool um i'm an only daughter so i've got four brothers so i guess naturally i just kind of found myself in sport yeah um, but I was very lucky. I was influenced very greatly by one great Kenyan called Benjamin Ayumba. Mm. He's like a brother to me. Um, and when we were kids, he'd make us run and I would win and he'd give me his medals. And, you know, the guys in his age group, Sally and, and Philip Mwenesi, they'd give me their medals. And I wanted to be like them because nice. I tasted winning yeah. and I tasted being, you know, um, how do I call it? Being uh, rewarded. Mm. I liked that. Mm. But I was pretty fast as well. So. Yeah. I mean, I just found myself in that space where I wanted to be like them. Mm. Uh, and I worked so hard. So I went to high school. I wanted to be like Sally. I did end up in her, in the same high school as her. Yeah. She was in State House. I was in State House. Yeah. In State House, I ended up being captain of everything that I kind of touched. Um, and I found myself in basketball. So I used to sprint before. Wow. Uh, oh, yeah, I was fast. Fancy. 12.8 seconds. What? I was super fast. Don't look at me now. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was pretty fast. Um, yeah. But it didn't work out for me in the sprint space. And one time, I remember we used to watch um, Michael Jordan and, and, um, and Kobe. And, and, mm. and I, I remember, what was it called? NBA Action on Sundays. Mm. And I was, I just used to look at those guys. And I want to be like these guys. You right. know? I want to be like this guy. So me and I came mm. yeah. I threw myself into um, a basketball court when we when it was from one yes and my coach was like no from once you know the way monos yeah. are treated no 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 yeah. no. you come second time yeah every day you tell me don't come yeah the next day i'd be there every persistent day me, persistent the amazing thing is the first day i got onto a basketball court i held the ball it was the worst shot probably i ever <laughs> made but i have it etched in my mind for my life forever wow the ball went in and i said i want to be here this is where I want that to be. That feeling. This is where I want to be. This is where I want to go. This is it for me. And that's been my life ever since. I have, you know, been in sports since I was maybe 14, like seriously. Yeah. Um, uh, and whenever I have an opportunity to compete, I used to compete. So yeah. that's what's driven me to what I am today. Just that I, that idea of being competitive from the word go, yeah. but also being rewarded and being mm. rewarded by people who are doing pretty well in their sport as well. So, I mean, you can imagine when you look at Benjamin Aimba and his accomplishments, right. I knew him, he was like, what, maybe... 
15, 16. And at that time, I was like eight. Right. So, Looking up to him yes, and thinking, I then, like that. I want that. Can you imagine? He ended up being, you know, our, one of our best coaches in this country. And, right. I, and I still had that um, person to look up to and say, he keeps going. Right. I want to I I continue. Um, my path was a little bit different. I studied marketing and everything. Um, and, and one of the drivers of me getting into marketing was I was such a good athlete. It kept bothering me. Why am I not getting paid at home because I yeah. had the opportunity to travel out and probably go to America or yeah. the UK or wherever, but it's very hard to leave my mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured, I mean, and, and to be very honest, I yeah. love my country and I keep asking myself, why can't we create opportunities at home? Why is every young guy right. thinking, I want to be a superstar in Europe? Mm. I want to, you know, I hold mentorship talks with young guys and the things they tell me is, I ask, what would you like to be? You know, maze i soka ni kicheza. Mino na tuni kienda maju. The cliche. It, it, you it hear breaks it. my heart. You hear it. And you know when you mentioned, you know, the 90s and Michael Jordan and Kobe, um, and, and that was Kenyan TV gold, you know, on weekends watching, you know, NBA Sunday, games. Sunday, 4 p.m. Right? And our brothers and everything. I'm, I'm not athletic at all. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I know what you're talking about when um, you describe um, people aspiring to travel so that they can follow their dreams or achieve their dreams. Mm -hmm. And I hear you on that, especially back in the day. That was the thing. Um, you also mentioned, um, you know, growing up and being close to your mother and having role models that you could see, people you could relate to mm -hmm. um, right here on the continent. It's not people you read about. Um, Actually, that's such a big deal. It it's a big deal. Me because Ben just does for me and that's right. why I want to be here. I just want to do stuff for right. guys here. Looking at people you can... Um, look up to and they inspire you and they're right here at home and you don't need to travel um competitive sport once you're addicted and you're thinking this is where i want to be you described it and you're saying it's a moment that will never leave you you fall in love with the basketball court how was it getting into now professional basketball as a woman so I, I, I find this question very interesting because I get it every single time. And I they add in and as a woman. I'm like, I don't care. I, I'm just <laughs> Cynthia, man. <laughs> but then I, I, reality checks in and that question is the reality of the world that Cynthia, you're a woman. Right. What is it? Mm. A, and maybe the reason why I've gotten to where I've gotten to is because I don't care whether I'm a woman. You are Cynthia. I'm Cynthia. I'm capable. I, I'm passionate. I want to do whatever. You know? But... Society asks me, you are a woman. Does right. that make any difference? It doesn't. Right. And it shouldn't. Mm. I'm capable. I can run. I can use my hands. I can use my head. And I use my brain. Right. So what exactly is the issue about me being a woman? But that's the way the world works. Right. So I've had to really adjust and say, okay, yes, because I'm a woman, it should be harder. Right. And I jump many more hurdles. I can't tell you what I've been through this week. Mm. Um, but what I can say is, you know what? I don't care. Mm. Just get out there and do your stuff. The, the world is going to judge you anywhere as a woman. We have so many things. The world's going to judge you if you're a woman, if you're a man, you're right. just judged 700 <laughs> times more. 24-7. That's it. And I'm looking at your profile, among yeah. other achievements. You know, she came in here humble, but I, I, I was like, this woman is a force. Um, leaders in sports, 30 under 40, global. class of 2018 recipient, first African woman to receive this accolade and your organization, Sports Connect Africa, managed the junior NBA league in Kenya. Look at you. And uh, also in charge of strategic development and execution of the Kenya Basketball League. Um, and uh, that's on Super Sport between 2014 to 2015. And you volunteered on... Uh, as a marketer for KBF, right. I mean, you juggle this and that. I've also seen one here that stood out for me. You played basketball for NSSF, USIU, Sprite Storms, KU, and you were a pioneer of Yana Ladies Basketball Team. Right. You've met a lot of people along the way. Yeah, and I'm not 40 yet. Sweetheart, why do we always feel like we're late? <laughs> You're not even 40. <laughs> Guys, I'm going through her profile. I haven't even read everything. Yeah. Is there one achievement of all these that you're most proud of? I'll say two. Yeah. Um, being awarded um, leaders in sport, first African woman, is no small feat. Uh, it's, I'll tell you, I was in the room and on that same day, yeah. Arsene Wenger was being awarded. 
Wow. Yes. He was being awarded for a lifetime achievement. So here you have this young African woman being told that you're the future. You're, you know, 40 mm. under, uh, top 30 under 40 in the world. Right. As the first African woman. And you have, you do, I, meanwhile, I'm an Arsenal fan. <laughs> so I'm looking at, and I, it was so unfortunate. I didn't get to connect with him, but my brother went to say hi to him. I, I missed that. He came, came, came. Guess who? Guess who? Guess who I just met? Yeah, that was huge for me because the people that were in war- that room and the guys that I, I was awarded with, yeah, incredible Formula One partnerships director, Arsenal commercial director. I mean, if I start naming names, everyone be like, "Man, she's just bragging." Right. But it was the who's of who's of who's of sports business in the world, and I, I would at some time, you know, I'd like cower and 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 then I it occurred to me that man. You deserve to be here. I belong here. You belong here. Your path is still a long way. Right. But they recognize the little bit that you've done. Mm. So be proud, stand up, and show other women that it's possible. The other thing that I'm very proud of is I'm currently running for the president of Kenya Basketball Federation, first African woman to try such a crazy feat. I'm going to have applauses throughout the show. I can't keep up. Could you say that one more time? I That's know. not... A small thing. You say like, yeah, two sandwiches and extra cheese. You say it so casually. You, you're going to be the very first. I am the very first running for that position. Possibly in Africa. I have not heard of any African woman running for president of any federation, um, f- basketball federation at least. Right. Um, but yeah. Is it intimidating? Jitters, not, uh, anything? Butterflies? Um, five days ago, I had super butterflies. But what I've had that has gone round about me, yeah. I'm harder than they know. I'm tough. You're coming for Bring this. Bring it on. I'm not. I'm, I mean, I believe you have to be respectful. But, you know, respect is earned. Mm. Right? So, I'm, I'm game. You know, this is exciting. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's a great time to be an African woman. There's a lot of examples of living legends, you know, not people you read about. And you're like, well, I can't relate to this. Or people you would never see eye to eye. Um, this brings me to, um, you know, when I saw your beautiful glossy poster and the way you walk around with your basketball and everything. And I'm like, well, it look at her. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm coming for the boys. Y'all better watch out. I love it. Um, you know, we're looking at a treadmill topic today, and it's all about women supporting each other. On your journey up, and with all the humility as you speak, I hear that you look at it as if this is just the beginning. Um, there's many other things yet to come. But have you had women support you on your journey up? Um, and what is your take about this narrative that women do not support each other? Mm, I think human beings don't support each other. Generally. We, yeah, our problem, we support each other, we don't. And, and I'll explain what uh, this is about. Yeah. Um, we like to label things mm. as human beings. Right. And so we also like to stick on the labels as human beings. And when you stick on the labels, it stops you from growing because mm. that defines you. Right. You stick under a definition. I have been very lucky. My friend Stella Opondo gave me my first job and we pulled each other along the way. Yeah. I've got my best friend Terry. Terry Nzomo is I don't even know. She's like my prayer partner. My girl, for the first time I'm speaking about you, you should be listening. <laughs> <laughs> she better be on that hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she's incredible. She's my wow. prayer partner. My friend Michelle. I mean, I can't start talking about the the circle I have around me, my friend Chella. And I'm speaking like this because it, girls, you need to know you need to lift your sisters up. Wow. And it's extremely important that you lift your sisters up and yeah. you acknowledge the ones that are lifting you up because sometimes you grow and then you're like, mm, yeah, right. No, no, really? There wasn't anybody? Nope. There was people in my life. There was people. There was people in my life. And, and, I, and I adore them and I love them and we're in different paths, but they carry me. They look at me and they say, Cynthia, we know where you're going. It's a bit crazy, but we're here. <laughs> we're here for you. <laughs> but we're here. And I'm there for them. Me, I'm like your loyal boy. Man, I'll carry my friends. No, you, you have a loyal energy already. As soon as you walked I mean, in, I was like, she's loyal. She, she's got that's that. That's who I am. You play with my girls, I'm coming for you. I, I tell my friends, if you're in a situation that you're not comfortable with, 
bring, I'll pick up, pick up, and I'll come pick you and get you out of that place. <laughs> That's just who I am. You're saying it's necessary. It's and and for the women who may not know this, and they have no examples of women supporting women, or that's the narrative out there, and we've been conditioned to not deconstruct what this thing is. And, you know, hating on women, you don't even know. You know, you just see... I don't even understand that. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> and, and, and in my mind, I'm thinking to myself... Um, you know, you, you mentioned you come from a family where you're the only girl. Right. Um, it sounds close-knit. And you didn't even think of it as, I'm the only girl in this family. You came from a loving home. Do you? My think brothers don't think of me as the only girl. I'm one of the guys. <laughs> you're one of the guys. <laughs> yeah. You know, do you think it's important to have more of these conversations? Because I saw that uh, picture that, you know, got us all curious. And we decided to have this treadmill topic. Wow. When Michelle Obama was you know, shouting out Kamala Harris. Yeah. And, and, and that was almost like a distortion of what is commonplace that we're used to seeing. Um, you say and mention women that are alive, your friends, you're saying Terry.